knowing a few tips about how to use pivot tables can help you find and extract data from large data sets such as you have in this assignment. In the FAST employee data set, we have over 9,000 records. I'm going to zoom down. 9,229 records to be exact. And that's a lot to try to parse to find the pieces of data, the, the smaller data sets you need to answer the questions. So the key is to learn how to use pivot tables. If you remember, we just need to select a cell in the data that we want to, to analyze. Click on Insert, Pivot Table, and it automatically selects the adjacent columns. I'm going to accept that. I want to put it in a new worksheet. So I'm going to click OK. We have the basics of the pivot table set up. Remember, we have the controls over here. I'm just going to pull some variables into the rows, and that gives me the names of all the employees. Of course, that's 9,000 names. That doesn't help a whole lot. We can use filters. I'm going to put in a city filter up here. And by clicking the down arrow, you can see it's all of the cities there. We can select individual cities. That's Atlanta. Or we can select multiple items, holding, just click Boston, London. So now I've got the employees for Boston, Atlanta, and London. I'm going to go back and deselect that and get all there. So that's all the employees. If I want to look at departments, I can drag that to take it off my rows. And I'm going to find departments over here, bring in department name. And now I've got all of the departments that are in FAST. And if you recall, again, we've got the same capabilities here. Using the drop down, we can select all or we can select multiple versions to do some filtering there. If I want to see the average salaries in these departments in all those cities, I just go up here and I find current annual salary, drop that in. And you need to remember that it defaults to the sum of the salaries. So we want to click value seal settings and I want to change that to average. That gives me the averages. I'm going to format this column to dollars to make it a little more understandable. So that's the average annual salaries in each department in all the cities. If I click on just Atlanta, that gives me, again, I've got to format that every time it refreshes, but it gives me the average salaries in each of the departments in Atlanta. If I want to know how many people are in each department in Atlanta, I'll just click back in there to open up my pivot table dialog. And what I like to do is just take the name and drag it into the summation column. And it defaults to the count of the number of names. Each name would be unique. So that gives me a specific count. And that shows the number of people in each department in Atlanta. It's worthwhile, really, to just spend some time, quality time, with pivot tables and play around to see all the various ways you can present information by dragging and dropping variables between the rows and columns, the values, and the filters. I want to just get the details on the senior information technologist specialist. There's 20 people, and I want to know their salaries. So I'm going to go here to Row Labels. And I'm going to deselect all, go down until I find that Senior Information Technology Specialist. Click that. That gives me their average salaries. And I want to get the individual salaries. And the way I like to do that is to go back here and just drag in the full name. I'm going to reformat that again so I can easily see it. And the thing that I like to be careful of is to make sure I've just got one record for each. And that's why I left those counts in there, the counts of the names. Those are my 20 people. I can take this information and copy it. 
control C go to another spreadsheet and the best way to do it is to decouple it from the database so you go pay special values and that gives you the information you need to run the test.